uh, am I audible? All those who are present here, am I audible and visible? Okay, hi Rohan, hi Amit. So I assume all of you are having sociology optionals. All of you are present here in the live uh, session, all of you have. And, uh, and, and uh, you have, uh, this is your first attempt or uh, just, just tell me about yourselves. Have you started studying sociology or um, first attempt Rohan, okay? And um, so have you started with your 2022 will be your first attempt. What about you, Amit? Uh, and uh, we will just wait for a couple of minutes uh, for a few other people to join in. First attempt, you completed your syllabus of sociology. And right now you have uh, like, uh, you, are, are you reading sociology optionals now? Okay, you've completed your syllabus, right. So see, uh, this session that we have designed, it's uh, the first class of sociology current affairs. Now, uh, I, I don't know if you have started with answer writing, Amit, but uh, once you start writing uh, answers, uh, you will see that you, you will need current affairs mainly. So uh, you might feel that why suddenly current affairs and sociology. Now see, uh, once you start writing answers, as I was saying, so you will need current affairs at two places. First, uh, you will need it as examples in your answers. And second, in your paper two, paper one is mostly from your static portion a bit here and there. Paper two, you will see there is a large portion of the syllabus, for example, challenges to social transformation or under these broad topics or, you know, um, problems social problems, the questions that are coming are very, very dynamic, are very, very dynamic. So they are mostly from your very current issues, current topics that are uh, taking place. Uh, for example, in 2019 I, uh, or 18, I don't remember, possibly 19, there was a question on the sociological impact of the Me Too movement because Me Too movement was very much in news. Uh, that year. Apart from that, um, you often have questions on farmer suicide when in 2013 and 14, farmer suicide was a news. So you had questions on farmer suicide or uh, farmers movements or this year, uh, like uh, this year or next year, this farm bills, you have had questions on MSP. So you have this uh, rural and agrarian transformation portion. Bully by app issue, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. We have not covered, I've not covered the bully by app issue in today's session, but we'll be covering it. So today's session, basically we'll, uh, we, though it's month wise, but there are lots of issues in one month. So I've taken the most important ones and we will try to go more thematically. Like, uh, last one month or more than one month, if around November, December, what are the uh, things that have taken place? So we'll cover some important areas, mostly cover uh, relating to women and children, nutrition, all these things, issues. We'll cover, for example, you had the NFHS 5 um, the, that had come off the periodic labor force survey. And another you also had in this year's uh, GS questions, uh, GS uh, paper, you had questions on the gig economy. So these things are important. And uh, we'll cover like that, like even month wise also, we'll try to go thematically, not always thematically, we will we'll go month wise, and we'll also try to be more thematic. So uh, politics and uh, fake news, religion, all these things we will cover in the next session. Today's session is mostly design, uh, designed on the gender, which is a very common topic, okay, which is a very common topic. So a couple of people have joined. Uh, so Prakhar, hi Prakhar, hi Akshita, hi Ziba. So you guys are attempting for the first time in 2022? Or um, you've, you've... So I'll, I'll like, I will have an idea if you write uh, so that uh, 
you know, I'll get to know that whether you've studied sociology before or you're just a beginner. If you uh, kindly write in the chat box. Studied before, Akshita, okay. Okay, good. Uh, how hard is it to develop? First attempt, okay. 2021 first attempt. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, not studied before, okay. How hard is it to develop an understanding of an issue through sociological lens? Not at all hard. It's not hard. It you, Initially, you might be a bit confused what to study, what not to study, but it's definitely not hard. And to make it easier, we are uh, this. Uh, we are here for with these current affairs sessions and other lectures that are other lectures. So I'll quickly share my screen. Yeah. So. So can you see my screen now, everybody? Screen is visible? Yeah, great. So this is the first session of our sociology current affairs. So how are we going to go about? We'll try to go with the important topics of the last one month. Sometimes this can also go beyond one month. I'm saying one month, but it might be two, three months, or maybe some important issues that were there even in the month of, say, April or May in, in see sociology, you have to go issue based. You can't be, it's it's not like your GS current affairs or your prelims current affairs. So there are, you have to go on a on broader topics. So there might be things that are maybe in the last one month, nothing that significant happened. But last one year, lots of things happened. So we will also go, uh, we'll also cover those. Uh, so um, my sources would be mainly Indian Express, the Hindu. EPW editorials, uh, sorry, the EPW articles, important ones, of course, uh, Down to Earth magazines, Yojana Kurukshetra for your uh, certain policies and all these things. So these are mostly the issues uh, that uh, sources that I'll be covering. And uh, apart from that, here we'll go for like, not only I'll tell you about the current affairs, uh, I'll tell them that how you can use it in your answers, which portion of your syllabus you can address and what kind of questions, if it's a new topic, what kind of questions you can have from there and where you can use it, right? So that is all and how you can use them in your answers. So moving on. So this is an article from EPW. Uh, it came in the month of December, first week of December. It says that revamped poverty estimates. So here the important points are, that according to the Niti Aayog Multidimensional Poverty Index that the Niti Aayog has uh, formulated, it says that poverty headcount for 2015-16 was 25.01, which is greater than your Tendulkar estimates. Tendulkar estimates spoke of the Tendulkar committee had given a poverty level of around 21%. Apart from that, another starking thing. Now, we in this uh, course, uh, let me be very clear. I'll give you sociological dimensions. I'll also give you data where you can just quote them directly using this, this PPT or you can just write it down uh, in, in a notebook. You can directly use it in your answers. So you don't have to do any kind of hard work. The MPI estimate shows that while rural poverty is at 32%, urban poverty stands at 8.81%. So here, there are two things that are very striking from this article. One is that our poverty headcount, that there are more number of people nationally who are poor. So you can actually use it, uh, you know, uh, in studies related to how is poverty and inequal in any, any topic related to poverty, you can use this data. Apart from that, the second data, which is more important, here it says that urban poverty is lower, but rural poverty is higher. So you can say that uh, in, you know, uh, problems of urbanization, urbanization holds, a, uh, there's, there's an important topic in urbanization. So in this problems of urbanization, you can use this, that due to rising rural poverty, there is more number of people who are migrating to urban areas uh, due to in search of jobs or a better livelihood. 
and that is the reason that there is growing informalization of labor there is a rise in urban uh, there is urban space crisis uh, there is rise in crimes and all these things so these are sociological dimensions which you can derive from such kind of data so here i'll show you like what kind of like previous year questions you can use for example explain the interlinkages between poverty deprivation and inequality this question came in 2013 so in this uh, question you can you easily use this kind of data that according to the niti aayog say you have a question on this line upsc is very fond of repeating themes and repeating not exactly questions but themes more or less uh, similar to uh, the ones that have been asked before so explain interlinkages between poverty deprivation and inequality inequality you can directly quote the uh, rural poverty urban poverty data and also there is an increase in poverty so you can say that from the niti aayog estimates of multi dimensional poverty index we can see that rural poverty and uh, that with an increase in poverty nationally according to the revised estimates there is also an increase in inequality the rural sector is shrinking uh, because uh, there is low farm productivity all these things so this is leading to problems of urbanization as i have said also there is a uh, someone has said something won't it look like a gs answer if we use data of course not how are you going to substantiate and this is not for your uh, this is not for your uh, paper 1 this is for the uh, for the dynamic questions of your paper 2 and you have to substantiate it by data so you can use this as an introduction as per the niti aayog mpi poverty head count has been so and so you can use this data and then you have to analyze just writing the data is not enough here is how your sociology answer will differ differ from your uh, from your gs answer that you have to sociologically analyze that it is leading to inequality it is leading to growing informalization of labor in the urban sector as i said or uh, it is leading to farm distress rural distress uh then this growing inequality is not is making us uh, making the our demographic dividend you also have population dynamics turn into a population distress or a demographic distress such kind of keywords are common for your gs and uh, for example sun meta preference there was a term called sun meta preference uh in your economic survey 2 3 years back so uh, can you say that you will only use it for your gs answers you cannot uh, use it for your sociology answers the themes are the same my dear farmer suicide will be uh will be addressed will be uh, can be asked in in your gs paper 1 indian society part it can be asked in your gs paper 3 it can be asked in your sociology paper also here you have to add the sociological dimension that's all the basic raw facts will remain the same clear yes it leads to less skills so they are not able to indulge into jobs which further lead to underutilization of human underutilization yes absolutely rohan absolutely so this is how you can another question where uh, such kind of data can be used is discuss emerging forms of inequality and acute poverty as challenges to social transformation so here you can talk about the rural urban uh, inequality so you can directly quote data from here as challenges to social transformation so this is actually kind of acting as a hindrance on better livelihood opportunities uh, towards an equal society and all these things so this is how this is about the first thing moving on any doubts here anybody any doubt one doubt yes yes one doubt yes you can tell rohan kumar yes you can tell do we have to use theories of thinkers in such questions not necessary see these are such uh, such dynamic areas or such upcoming areas conventional theories 
whatever you have read there is so much of study that is going on it's not possible for you there will be contemporary thinkers one or two here and there fine say some uh, conventional thinker some known thinker has done studies on poverty you can if you know you can write you can um, uh, you can write about amartya sen or you can write about uh, some other thinker who has done studies on poverty but apart from that there is so much of uh, thing that is going on research it's not possible so even in sociological analysis is fine like any thinker theory see this is one problem which aspirants face which like you always feel that you 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 will hold you get marks only if you quote a thinker but that's not humanly possible because there is so much of work going on your aim is to clear upsc not to become a phd even a person doing phd in sociology will not know the names of thinkers of so many themes he or she may be specialist in one area so you do cannot uh, remember so many things a sociological analysis and that sociological analysis comes from your reading of newspapers you can write some studies and that those studies i'll be giving you but not in everything if if there is some a study on poverty recent study or something i will definitely be integrating it we will come how you can use to think this next issue that was there is raising the age of marriage so here again you can uh, there you might have a question that maybe a 150 words question a 10 marker which says that um, write the sociological impact of uh, of legislative action of legislative uh, actions or policies like raising of marriage age for women because this was a news that there has they have raised the age of marriage age for women is 20 uh, from 18 it has been raised to 21 so here you can uh, talk of arguments like this that more than 50% women uh, till 2005 were married below the age of 18 despite having a legislation here you can quote some thinker for example mary john she says that you can say as per sociologist mary john you can say almost 45% of those who are belonging to the poorest households marry in childhood while just 10% of women from wealthiest households did so so this so when you are arguing against the sociological impact you have to say so as per sociologist marriage on it's not like you are you are giving your opinion you're saying some study has been made who has said that uh this uh lowering of age will not actually act as women empowerment because already people who are uh who are getting their daughters married before the age of 18 no law can stop them because already they are taking the illegal path and 45% of those who are marrying below the age of 18 they are already uh they uh, they come from very poor households and from wealthy households only 10% women from wealthy households do it so if you are saying that a poor person uh, if you raise the raise the marriage age to 21 from 18 the poor the uh, the girl will get an opportunity because that is the logic that has been given that there will be women empowerment or uh, their women will get to study more or he, her she can complete her graduation because at 21 we complete our graduation but the point is that if there is uh for for poor people flouting of norm you can use that flouting of norms is 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 very easy so they always take routes to flouting of norms there exist uh you know uh, ghost markets where women are women below the age of 18 you can uh, write that uh, they there are uh, these women are they are married off you can write about some case studies where women from west bengal places like uh, in, in in southern districts of andhra pradesh in the in the relatively poorer districts of andhra pradesh telangana these women are married at a very young age and there exists a market for these underage brides who are taken who are married off to these uh, in these um, 
countries like Saudi Arabia and all these things. And uh, because there is a market for child brides, you can use quotes like that, market for child brides. And uh, so there, these people are in demand and they are illicit markets, they are illegal markets. So uh, it's not that raising the, it will actually lead to empowerment because these poor people, they don't have sources of livelihood. A woman is seen as, uh, as, as a profitable thing only if, because when she's being married off at an early, a woman is actually considered a burden. So when she's married off to a, a person who is giving the family uh, a lot of uh, money for getting a, a child bride, so the family is poor, so they will automatically go for it. So these illicit markets uh, are there. So you can write about these child bride markets operating in Asia. So all these illicit routes, uh, because of these illicit routes, this uh, legislation will be, it, it, it will be only half-heartedly, it will be successful. That's what sociologist Mary John says. Because already people who want to get their women mad, uh, educated, they are, they are not actually getting their women uh, married at an early age. And people who are poor, you, you raise the age to 21, 24, 28, doesn't matter. They will always find the illicit route to get their uh, daughters uh, married off because marriage is like selling them off. So that you can write. This is a sociological interpretation. Next. You can use this kind of things uh, in your population dynamics portion. Demographer Anne Blank suggests that it is giving birth in adolescence that is unsafe and maternal maternity after eating is by far the lowest. So actually you are not contributing. So if you have a question like this, that uh, sociological impact, as, as I said, or... Uh, Say you have to argue or you have a question that uh, recent legislations, uh, recent legislations uh, like raising the age of marriage for women are uh, contributing towards um, uh, 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 fertility level, uh, uh, contributing to low MMR and IMR and contributing to uh, below replacement level fertility, uh, fertility rates. Here you can put, uh, so when you're arguing, you can you will give your agreements in favor of that but again also you give your agreements like demographer and blank says that it is by it is giving birth in adolescence which is below 18 that is unsafe so by raising the age to from 18 to 21 these three years even if you give birth after 18 the chances of of having a poor pregnancy or maternal mortality or having a malnourished child it 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 is it is it is not affected so 18 to 21 actually doesn't serve any purpose by that logic, by demographic logic. So in the conclusion, you can write that ultimately uh, social interventions like a sound education policy, uh, inclusive growth will help in uh, help, help us achieve uh, uh, desired levels of, uh, uh, of, of socioeconomic uh, growth and all these things. So this is how you can use it. Can we quote issue of marital rape as an example in this question? How are you going to use the uh, thing of uh, marital rape? How are you going to use? Like where? I did not understand the context. If it's on broadly on the context of women, you can. That uh, women empowerment. But yes, raising the... Uh, one thing that you can say in the context of uh, marital rape is, uh, it uh, in the con if it says that such kind of legislation is actually going to act on uh, women empowerment, so whether the woman is eighteen or whether the woman is twenty one, the voice of woman is is very less in a marriage in India. So uh, no matter whatever is age is, if a woman can't say no at the age of eighteen. A woman will not be able to say at the age of 21 also because three years doesn't make a difference. Or you can quote some thinker on that. Or you can argue, make use the same agreement that it will give the that right education in these three years that she gains education and awareness. She can fight for her case of marital rape. Again, that is a very pulled uh, argument. 
An 18 year old can't, can't uh, speak against a marital rape, but 21 year old can. That is again a very pooled agreement. Um, it is, it is, you cannot use it in a, as, as a positive statement. And also, uh, it's not that only 18 year olds are maritally raped. There are women at 40, 50 who face marital rape, if you see the statistics. So it will be a very pulled kind of an explanation. Okay, Rohan. So any questions in this thing? So did are you getting an idea, guys? Like how you can use the, um, how, where, how you can use contemporary studies or how you can, um, you know, where you can use the data, how you can introduce or something. So the objective of this is not, not just feeding you with current affairs, also telling you how you can use in your answers how you can derive uh, you know, from the basic statistics, whatever is given to you, case studies, you can derive introductions, powerful conclusions, use it as facts and figures. Exactly, yeah. That should be your conclusion, Amit. That should be your conclusion. Please explain the third point once. Demographer and blank, she says that maximum that women who uh, have unsafe pregnancies or who have this maternal mortality, this is maximum seen in women below 18. So if you are trying to raise the age from 18 to 21, what good does it serve? In three years already after 18, chances of unsafe pregnancy is reduced. So... Be, whether she's get becoming a mother at the age of 20, 19 or becoming a mother at the age of 21 or becoming a mother at the age of 22 doesn't make a difference. But if you had to, but when someone is getting married at the age of 18, below 18, she must, she, there are chances. That's why 18 is the age when that is the threshold that is considered. Above that, you're an adult. So that is why Below 18, she might have unsafe pregnancy. Below 18, she might have other complications. Maternal mortality rate is high. Now, below 18, no matter however you raise the marriage age, these people will always find, whether you set the bar at 18 or whether you set the bar at 21, people who are flouting norms, people who are flouting norms will always get a uh, you know, get a, get a way to flout norms. And why that exists? Because there are market for child brides. Because there is a sun meta preference in the Indian society. Because the society is governed by patriarchal norms. A woman is considered a burden. Because there is heavy dowry. So these are the reasons why women are married at, an, at, at a lower age. Because the faster you get rid of them, she's a burden, better. Uh, the man, uh, maybe if, if the woman has a has a daughter, uh, maybe uh, for 13 or 14 year old, she will try to get her married and maybe she has a son or maybe two daughters and one son. So she one is maybe the age of one daughter is six. The other daughter is maybe 10 or 12. She will try to get the elder daughter married off at the age of 12 years and try for the marriage of the second daughter as fast as possible and try to have another child. Because there is sun meta preference, because the society is patriarchal. Also, there are uh, people who are caught in poverty and inequality. There you can use your rural poverty data. And you can, in such questions also, you can use those data. That rural poverty is 32.5%. That is the reason you have these, uh, these, these child bride markets that are operating. People come and they pay a hefty amount and they want child brides child brides or virgin brides, as you can see. Also, there operates a market for trafficking. These women are trafficked in the name of marriage. So they are basically disguised brides. They are not brides. So you can use these words, child bride markets, disguise child bride markets in Asia, or you have these women trafficked. I'll try, though human trafficking is not, or women trafficking is not a it's not a current affairs issue. It's a, it's, a, it's a constant issue. It's always there. I'll try and give you some data on human trafficking so that you can interlink these things in your answers. Is it clear? Prakhar, um, is it clear now? Down. Is it clear now, the third point? Okay, great. Uh, Ma'am, can I ask a doubt? Yeah, who has a doubt? 
ma'am this is akshita akshita yeah uh, yes. ma'am actually uh, i am a little confused about the sociological uh, context that you're talking about uh, like how do i proceed ahead with a sociological answer like uh, when you were talking about poverty and inequality aspects so right. it has i mentions to it right for example environmental is there and political reasons are also there so what is that one thing that i should stick to as far as the uh, sociological uh, aspect is concerned or the optional paper is concerned so how should i proceed with my answer like should i answer uh, it in a societal manner per se or should i bring some other aspects also see when you are proceeding though this is not a course on answer writing we have a separate program on that but since you are asking i'll address this query when you are been asked something on poverty and inequality you have to look up at every aspect of the society how poverty is aspect affecting women gender is a very important how women have to you know uh, recently there was a report where uh, women are worst sufferers of these pesticides endosulfan that was used in uh, kerala and you'll see that the number of women who are affected are more so that is one kind of thing women have to because of the sun meta preference or because the sun is given more preference in the family women have to face nutritional deficit so that is how the, you have to look in the angle of women you have to see if your question is on poverty what exactly is your question like uh, which question you want to find an answer to uh ma'am the main question is that i get confused like how do i differentiate my answer uh from basic gs answer right Or so I'm... you have to look at different dimensions of the society Right. you have to look at dimensions of the society and data or whatever current affairs examples it is just to make you aware of the topic of like the current issues that are happening around you for example raising of marriage age of children of women and whether you can substantiate your analysis your sociological analysis when you are sociologically analyzing something you have to look at different dimensions of the society so how poverty is affecting children how poverty is affecting women how poverty is affecting the other marginalized communities how how it is leading to uh, how informalization of labor is leading to poverty and vice versa so you have to how it is affecting Uh, rural urban space so you have to see different dimensions it will be a cross sectional study when you are studying poverty in the current context okay got it now is it clear yes ma'am okay you have to see different that is how you differentiate between a sociological sociologically or analyzing say sociological uh, impact of write a sociological yeah. analysis of poverty in the indian in the current indian context right so you have to look at different cross sections of the society see i'm i'm uh, studying of the covid uh, situation so you have to say like how it has led to poverty and so you have to look up migrant laborers you have to look at women you have to look at children that children are uh, women are facing a shadow pandemic in the form of domestic violence so that is also kind of a poverty no uh, that is they are facing poverty how how does the un define poverty it's a denial of rights so this shadow pandemic is a kind of a where there is a gross violation of domestic uh, there is increase in domestic violence gross violation of women's rights so that is also a kind of poverty that women are facing uh, apart from that uh, you have to see on children they are denied of their rights to like not denied per se but the the there's a huge digital divide that is why like according to a un report 91% uh, children are out of schools and so many like more than 50% they cannot afford uh, these uh, these uh, smartphones or whatever so they are left out of the thing so that is also one kind of poverty the lgbtq community or for example when you are looking into the micro analysis uh, people who are into uh, for example prostitutes who who's uh, who who are who, whose business is around uh, you know making a physical contact so they are left out they are also denied of their living wage so this is how you have to sociologically analyze is it clear akshita yes ma'am it's clear now great so see connected themes how you can use it 
this is not a previous year question, but you might have a question on that. How raise, raise in marriage age arise, it will be rise in marriage age, will affect infant mortality, MMR, or its implication in population dynamics. You can have an, a small 150 words question on how it will affect the population dynamics or something like that. So these are the arguments you have to use. You can use, for example, what Mary John said, what Anne Blank said against it. Like you have to say that this is how, these are the areas where it will not be affected. And apart from that, you can use your uh, things. Uh, use your positive, like uh, it will lead to greater empowerment or whatever. Uh, though they will not ask a, a direct question on this issue, I, uh, there are lesser chances. You, you can use it as a sub point in population dynamics question. You can use it as a sub point. Next, role of women centric policies in gender empowerment. This can come. So, how do you think that legislative actions? Uh, play a role in gender empowerment. So you can use it as a positive that raising the ma marriage age of, of women, uh, it will lead to, uh, you know, better educational outcomes. However, you, you have to add that uh, only women who are poor uh, families, they mainly get their marriage. So raising from 18 to 21 doesn't really serve that much of good or whatever it has the logic that has been given, whatever points you have. And then you have to conclude in saying, so this can be one of the points in gender women-centric policies and gender empowerment. And then you can say that overall, uh, that it has to be a combination of policies. It has to be a combination of, social, uh, of breaking social stigma. It has to be uh, breaking of the glass ceiling. It has to be gendered, uh, this breaking of the gender division of labor. Um, or, you know, the breaking of domestic violence through through judicial uh, actions, all these things. Only then uh, we can have a proper, uh, uh, we, we can have, we can reap the proper benefits of women-centric policies. Like that, you have to come with a conclusion, a well-round-up conclusion. Is it clear? Any doubts? If the question is about uh, a particular issue, for example, this issue only, can we quote reports about other issues which is emerging due to, yes, 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 absolutely. You have to analyze from different dimensions. So because of this, any other issue is happening that you can always write. In fact, that will make help the, you know, uh, examiner understand that, okay, this person has his, Eyes and ears open. He's open to whatever is happening around him. Okay, moving on. I, I guess, uh, no doubt. Moving on. When you don't have doubts, just type no in the chat box. N-O. Example of women chief justice of India in 2027. We can quote this. Uh, women chief justice of India in 2027. Uh, how are you going to quote this? Like in what context? You can unmute and say. You can unmute and say. Rohan. Okay, moving on. Now, NFHS 5 has come. Here, you can, there are some positive sides and there are some flip sides, which are flip sides or areas of concern. So, this, this was in news because NFHS 5 report has come and how it has impacted women and children. Now, for the first time, sex ratio has birth, at birth has reached 929. Initially, it was 919. And from there, there has been a 10 pointer rise. Also, TFR has dropped from 2.2% to two replacement level of 2%. So this you can use as a positive. You can use as, you know, uh, how far do you think our policies um, have been effective uh, or our health and uh, educational outcomes have been effective um, in, uh, in providing women empowerment, in providing gender justice or in uh, balanced social development, such kind of questions, you can use such kind of data. 
that we have the sex ratio at birth according to NFHS 5 and source of the data is must. Either it will be a study or it will be some kind of uh, some kind of uh, study by some sociologist or by some organization or some government report. So quoting is must. For example, NFH is fine for impact on women and children. You can say, uh, you can quote this, total fertility rate has dropped or population dynamics, you can have questions um, on how far that, uh, total fertility rate that what is the uh, how far health impacts are going to control population uh, increase uh, like uh, policies legislative uh, policies or you know uh, our policies are going to impact uh, the population so here you can write that tfr has declined literacy levels have increased for example women you can directly quote search data because these are nfhs outcomes Percentage of women and men who have completed 10 years of schooling has reached 41% and 52%. So 52% men, 50.2% men, sorry, and 41%. So nearly 50%, you can say, of women uh, are actually using this. Uh, uh, they, they are... Uh, they have completed 10 or more years of skilling, schooling. So impact of education on women, you can use such kind of data. Now, I will tell you a, a, a hack that you can use. That is, uh, whenever you are uh, trying to highlight the positive side of, of, a, of a particular data, say you have limited, you cannot remember so much data. You have, uh, you have this data and you want to use it negatively. So you will say that uh, only uh, slightly more than one third or only 41% women have attained 10 years of, or more of schooling. You have the same data, you, but you want to use it as a criticism. Now, same data, you want to use it as a uh, positive, okay, as, as an advantage or when you're highlighting the positives. You can say, Nearly 50% women, because it's 41%, just 9% less, nearly 50% women in India have used 10 years or more of schooling. Have uh, Sorry, they have completed 10 years or more of schooling. So the same data you can use in a positive way, in a negative way, by the way you represent it. Is it clear? So this is just a quick hack that I've told you, how you can use it. Now, uh, the areas of concern from NFHS 5. Now, you can directly get a question on NFHS 5. It might be, say, the recent uh, report on NFHS 5 uh, shows uh, a significant improvement. There might be a statement. Improvement in... Uh, significant improvement in women um, um, say in gendered uh, impact on gender significant improvement in women uh, related parameters however uh, concerns still remain elaborate on views or the nfhs5 has not been a foolproof exercise in uh, granting gender justice do you agree you can use it as i, I can come as a Gen uh, can come as a GS question also, can come in your sociology, in your Indian society part also it can come. So whatever I'm teaching, it, it will cover your GS1, Indian society part. Also, you, will, you, you can use it in your sociology optionals. This is mainly for sociology optionals, but you can use in your GS1, Indian society portion also. Now, there are some concerns. So India has more randomic people occurred since NFH is four. Anemia rates have risen. Uh, between both men and women. So you have to write the sociological implications of that. And what is the sociological implication of that? The implication is that it will lead to demographic distress. There will be job loss. There will be feminization of poverty. There will be exclusion of women from the labor force because women are uh, already, they face a discrimination. There is a Marxist concept of reserve army of labor. Women are considered as reserve forces who are uh, 
uh, to be confined within their uh, households. Now, just because they are facing some kind of health hazards, they are, they are anemic, they are physically infirm. So they will face exclusion at labor force. So that will uh, further lead to feminization of poverty. More number of women will be poor. Then they have to burden, they have to bear the burden of household work. Uh, so there will be double burden for them. First, they have ill health. They have the burden of ill health. Then there's burden of household work and the, there, there will be an increase. So once they're in, inefficient, there will be more uh, given the patriarchal institution where uh, the patriarchal norms that women have to, uh, you know, women have to uh, do all kinds of household work, keep everyone happy in the thing. There will be in the household, they, there will be increase in domestic violence. So these are sociological uh, derivations, analysis that you can make. Just think what will happen if the woman is, uh, women in the women in India, there's an increase in the uh, in the prevalence of anemia among women. So what will happen? There will be malnourished children who will be, uh, a malnourished mother will give birth to a malnourished child. Now the child cannot reap uh, the best benefits of education. So he will start failing. So what happens is one day he'll be made to work as a child labor. So such kind of derived outcomes also happen. There also, if the child was fully healthy, he could have attained educational uh, standards, he could have gone to college, he could have gone to school and contributed to the skilled or unskilled labor force, whatever, as a fully productive labor. But now he's becoming a child labor, which is not only unproductive, but also a, you know, a, a kind of, uh, it's, it's a distressful, it's a burden on the economy. Because the, uh, the person is actually left out of the labor force. Also, it will be a, a, a burden on the existing labor force because these men and women who are anemic, they will not be fully productive. The existing labor force has to bear the burden of these, uh, these people who are half productive. So that is how you have to uh, derive your uh, sociological analysis. So there can be, there will be job losses. At the higher level, there will be growing women already. They are if there's an increase in anemia already women because of pregnancy and all these things they are left out of the labor force now if there is this there will be the double jeopardy or there is a double uh, there's this double burden first you're anemic then you are you join the job uh, workforce and you're pregnant then there will be you know a total uh, these women will be left out of the labor force no one will be willing to take them so there will be feminization of poverty so these are the things, sociological analysis that you have to do. And such kind of words, feminization of poverty, demographic distress or contribution or reinforcement of patriarchal norms or um, just because you have to stay within, you, you cannot join the labor force. You are staying out of the labor force. You have to uh, contribute to the housework. So patriarchy will be reinforced. Second is, Percentage of children below two years receiving an adequate diet is a mere 11.3%. So there is a nutritional deficiency. Children are contributing only 11.3%, uh, getting only 11% of children are getting adequate diet. Only 11% children. So again, this is little inadequate diet. So if there is inadequate diet, the child will be malnourished. He cannot, we cannot, educational outcomes will be uh, you know, improper. We cannot reap the benefits of education or, or, or uh, educational uh, whatever facilities we are having. This child will be made to work as a child labor because he cannot uh, do well in education. Uh, so these kind of things you have to say. These are sociological implications. Uh, one thing in case of women that you can do is you can uh, use the life cycle approach. For example, if there's a malnourished woman Right from her birth, what happens? Uh, then she goes to school, what happens? You can think like that. Then uh, she, she is married, she gives birth to a malnourished child. Then she cannot join the labor force, <coughs> or she's left out of the labor force. Then what happens? That kind of approach you can follow. How many thinkers should we quote in 20 markers? There is no fixed rule, but uh, 
if only your thinker is see only quoting thinkers is not enough aditya uh, you have to give an analysis of it i have seen copies of students who just write thinkers this thinker said this this thinker said this this thinker said this if you are told to analyze the problem of child labor if you are writing five thinkers who are saying the same thing what is the point of quoting five thinkers write only one or two in one line most important ones your second paragraph should uh, have a name of another thinker who is trying to highlight a different dimension and is this for paper 1 or paper 2 aditya so there is no hard and fast rule how many thinkers even if you don't write thinkers not an issue if you have data or you have sufficient sociological analysis and quoting only thinkers is not enough people cram their minds with thinkers you can also quote your um some important case studies that is very very important case studies you can use some kind of study that has happened for example the hawthorn experiment that was a case study it's an important case study so when you are uh, writing about the your paper one when you are addressing work and economic life you have to read about the, that's where the uh, from there you have these uh, concepts so hawthorn experiments are very very important yes elton mayors yes exactly exactly so such kind of epic case studies or recent case studies that is also ye long wells different case studies or you are uh, say you uh, quote some sutta kaviraj or some other important indian thinkers that is important so i will not suggest that you cram your mind with a lot of thinkers only if each thinker has uh, if if thinker 2 is saying a different thing from thinker 1 then only you make it a separate paragraph and write otherwise five thinkers saying the same thing doesn't make does, doesn't add more dimensions to your answer any any doubts from this portion anybody anybody any doubts from this question any questions from this portion okay no okay great so we'll move on <clears throat> this is the periodic labor force survey which was again in news in uh, recent times so here you will get some insights about uh, since we are dealing with uh, the topic of women mostly and it will the topic of women and children will come it's a repeated theme so you have to cover all dimensions so at the end of the thing you know uh, end of the session i'll tell you how you can use these data in generating questions on different dimensions on women right so uh, according to the pfls the periodic labor force survey there's a uh loss of employment of 6.1 million wage workers so there has been a 2.9% of wage workers decline but self employment is on a rise 7.7% of self employed so this data you can quote in rising informalization impact of covid on the economy sociological study sociological analysis of impact of covid you can write that there is a fall in wage employment but a rise in self employment so this has so this means that there is a rising informalization in the economy self employed people are on a rise uh, then uh, you can integrate with examples for example now you have people self employed professionals for example you have these photographers photography is a is a budding business you have these makeup artists and all these things so they are basically catering to urban needs they are basically catering to urban needs so you can use it you can interlink it like uh rising consumerism uh so uh there has been a rise in consumerism and increase in self employment uh rise in self people who are self employed or, or growing informalization or growing or you know for entertainment purposes you have these platform workers or these youtubers that you have so they are basically what they show a very consumerized life so the urban population are subscribers to 
consumerism and this has led to a rise in um, informalization uh, informalization of labor so what is happening is these people are out of the social security net there is widespread inequality some are earning more some are earning less some youtubers earn a lot of money some don't someone is into a wage employment who is which is who is getting a fixed payment a youtuber is earning in lakhs so this is leading to uh, rising inequality in the urban sphere so such kind of extrapolations you can do getting my point so for writing such kind of answers you can write so there was a question on uh, gig workers or platform workers on in gs2 so this is a very recurrent theme these days because this is on a rise upsc will ask you questions on themes that are very very common uh, or that is happening around you again another data that you have that women workforce there has been a rise in wage and self employment so this you can use as a as um, as as a fact in as a figure or uh, or as a data in your gender empowerment that therefore women there has been a rise in thanks to the policies that wage uh, wage and self employed women has been on a rise there has been rising and much of this has been in the agricultural sector so as a counter agreement to your uh, declining labor force participation rate when you are saying that there has been a decline in labor force par uh, participation rate women labor force participation rate uh, analyze then you can use it as a counter agreement but uh, according to the pfl is 2019 2020 20, there has been a rise in wage and wage and self employment among women so this is one positive thing that you can quote next national income has grown in india by 4% labor income has witnessed a fall so there has been a structural a pandemic has led to reversal of the slow process of structural transformation so structural transformation that was taking place from rural to urban that was happening we are our uh, incomes were rising that is called a change in structure right uh, a shift from agriculture to industry uh, or uh, all these things so this has been impacted by covid as you can see additional workforce were actually actually got employed in the rural agricultural sector so the structural transformation got reversed so whenever you have asked a question on impact on covid and you are writing the migrant labor crisis or you have been asked the problems of urbanization in covid times you can use this data and you can say that the structural transformation in the indian economy your rural and urban transfer social transformation is a is a topic in itself in paper 2 it has totally reversed due to covid and the addition to the labor force has been uh, it has been there has been an addition to agricultural labor force but labor income that we consider it has fallen so these there has been growing informalization there has been a shift from industry to agriculture so we are moving backwards going by rostos i uh, are you aware of the rostos uh, the uh, stages of economic transformation that from a pre take off you take to a take off stage and uh, first there's an agrarian then you Uh, agrarian economy from there you go to industry then you go to a pre take off stage and then you go to a take off stage so rostod speaks of these five you can add these these are your paper one things but uh, related to theories of development but you can add in your paper too so here in the indian economy's case we are reversing so from your pre take off to you are moving to a backward stage so that this is what covid has led to led has has actually caused so here you can say again in the context of gender this is a positive data that you can use uh, increase in self employment you can use it in the example of uh, informalization of labor a uh, growing informalization of labor or uh, so this is how you can use it this data so uh, any questions anybody is it clear how you can use these things says okay amit is it clear is it are you are you getting uh, 
how you can use your sociology current affairs see it's not like your gs current affairs or your um, your uh, prelims current affairs it is different uh like uh, in prelims you just have to know the issue what is it say you are reading banking you have to know that okay rbi has floated a particular kind of bond what are the features of the bond what other bonds did rbi have direct but here it there is nothing direct as such so all that you can get is issues that are there in news and data that is there data you have to use to substantiate your answer and sociological analysis you have to derive from that from the data that is what is the work of a sociologist that you have to understand the data and from your topics you have to know that to how how you can sociologically analyze the topics for example raising of the age of uh, marriage age of women so next uh, connected themes would be sociological analysis of impact on overall unemployment scenario so you can write about how we are moving from forward instead of moving forward there has been a reversal of the structural transformation we are moving backward this you can see that addition has been to the agricultural labor force increase in self employment uh, informalization of where there is lack of social security so all these things next sociological analysis of impact of covid on women increase in self employment employment you can use it as a positive thing next this is on micro platforms this is very very important very very important important area that is micro platforms so you have these women who are working you will often when you this article came out in epw so a uh, micro platform is on a rise so uh, are you aware of what is a micro platform you often when you open the internet you will see that there is a work from home or you know these part time jobs for women or part time jobs there are lots of ads that are coming up so these are micro platform and how micro platforms are affecting the job sphere this is important for your paper one and paper two as well for your paper one also work and economic life you you can add this dimension of micro work micro my, micro uh, work platforms uh yeah guys uh, uh anyone's microphone is on then can he switched off okay okay great so what is a micro platform so these you know these uh, works of these uh, translators you can sit at home and you will be uh, given uh, a, uh, say you can it's a part time job or you know some part time teaching somewhere or something where it's not full time full time means work full term employment or something means what that you have a definite office space you have certain norms and something uh that you have to set of norms there will be a certain amount of there is a contract with you that this is your fixed salary uh or uh, you will get a base amount and depending on your targets you get this much this much and you will be given a 3 month uh, notice i'm i'm speaking of contractual employment or you know a uh, fixed term employment or something like that uh, you'll be employed for one year you will get these, these kind of benefits say 10 leaves per day such kind of conditions exist for these micro work platforms there is no such condition you just register on a platform and you they just give you a particular assignment maybe they give you a passage and give you to translate that you just translate it and you give your uh, bank account and uh, some amount say 20 dollars get thing in your account or something like that and uh, also sometimes there are jobs where you have to be subjects of research for example some universities conducting some experimental uh, research on something on human how the human mind works or how modern women are sensitive to um, you know how 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 modern women conceive of uh, emotional stress or something like that um, and you you just becoming a subject to that research you earn uh, $10 or something like that okay shag india okay yes so what are we'll start with the definition micro platform refers to crowd working platforms that provide business with access to a large flexible workforce distributed across the globe for performing numerous small quick and often repetitive tasks now this is by uh, a study by burge 
he says that these are micro platforms. ILO says that there has been a rise of digital labor platforms because it is one of the most significant transformations after the financial crisis of 2008. So when you are addressing uh, questions on globalization, how it has changed. So subprime lending crisis was one such thing, one blot or something on globalization that how the crash of Merrill Lynch actually led to crashing of the entire world economy. So you can say post-globalization changes, you can actually speak of, uh, you know, that there has been a rise in labor, digital labor platforms. Uh, now we will have a sociological analysis. So if you're asked sociologically analyze uh, these uh, impact of these micro platforms, so this ILO data you can use in your post-globalization uh, change of society or change of economy there. Micro work definition you can use there. Now, what for and against means that how it is positively impacting, you can write about the positive impacts and you can against, you can use it as a criticism. Your question might not have to, you don't have to address when you're writing an answer in sociology optional. It is not required that they will give you uh you have to address both the sides maybe they will uh, uh, give you a question uh where they said that they say that uh, they give a statement that micro work platforms post globalization has led to uh, say gender empowerment or has led to uh, reinforcement of patriarchy so they will hide that one dimension do you agree? And then if they are hinting at one dimension, then you have to give a balance that how it is uh, leading to uh, patriarchy. Maximum, you have to focus on that. Small, you have to write, but some good points about it. So we are here, we are going to cover in a broad way, the entire dimensions. So how it is positively impacting is micro work means you can work from home. Work from home, again, don't confuse with your IT workers who are working from home in the COVID. This was always there. This is, uh, you know, totally different from a pandemic situation. Always you work from home because you're a part-time worker. So uh, they can prioritize over uh, their roles as a mother and uh, wives and daughters. This is according to a study by Gray and Suri in 2019. You can quote these. So according to study by Gray and Suri, it says that it leads to prioritizing their roles as mother wives. Also, the con, uh, articulations of convenience. Uh, they can perform the reproductive roles that family demands. So in a patriarchal setup, the reproductive uh, roles and the special gender division of labor, women as primary caregivers use these keywords. All these things uh, are actually taken care of when you have this micro work because, uh, you know, it... Uh, if the other woman can take care of her family, her um, her in-laws, her everything, her children. She can work as a primary caregiver and also uh, work. It also creates symbolic capital, respectable femininity and helps in status creation. So your work wife is also working. She's earning something. So that creates a kind of a respectable femininity because I am also contributing some money. I also have some kind of attachment outside my home because a housewife for a homemaker now we use the term homemaker instead of housewife just to have created this image of respectable femininity so uh, because housewife is something that okay you stay in the house you are a housewife but a housewife has that is called unpaid labor she has to put in a lot of unpaid labor imagine our mothers or whoever like whoever are married or something you have to do a lot of work in the house that's how this now scenarios are changing but com uh, compare it to the previous generation then uh women had to do a lot of work in the house and they don't get paid for that so there are certain cultural norms that are imposed on it that it is your family your household you have to take care of everybody if someone is sick after uh, giving food to everybody you can only then sit and have your food and that too uh you know the mm, whatever is left after giving everybody, whatever is left, only that much you can eat. So uh, that actually, uh, symbolic capital means that uh, it, it's a symbolism that you are actually contributing to capital creation. 
you're contributing to capital creation because you are uh, 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 working somewhere. When a labor is working somewhere, he's, he contributes to capital creation, isn't it? Yeah, that is uh, symbolic capitalism. Also, it leads to a respectable femininity. So homemaker, so if you have to, you can also add these kind of things, respectable femininity. So when you're using the word housewife to homemaker, it creates an image of respectable femininity. Now, when this same housewife is working for a gig platform or for a, you know, as a gig worker or for as a platform worker or these micro work things, she's also leading to status creation because I'm working so and so. That creates a kind of a, of an aura or a kind of a false image or a status. So this is how it is helping. And also it is based on meritocracy. So educated women are getting employed there. So it is not that, so women can break the guards of caste or uh, for, for example, a low caste woman and a high caste woman, if both of them are educated, then if you apply to a micro work framework there, then you will definitely um, you know, if, if, the, if the Dalit woman is more qualified or more suitable for the job, she will be selected and not the upper class. So it's based on strict meritocracy. So these are the positives. So women can break. So women have to face this double uh, job party that first you're a woman, then you're a Dalit or, uh, you know, two, three layers of inequality, two, three layers of inequality they have to face. So this is not there in such kind of micro work. So this is one positive side. Now we'll see to the negatives. So this is actually leading to radicalized and gendered labor hierarchies because these well-educated women who would actually join the labor force, when they could join the labor force, maybe they could have bagged executive positions because when you're working for a micro work platform, you have to do, say, kind of translation, say an English graduate or a, a master's in English person has to work uh, for translating something or you have to work as a graphic designer, designing a particular graphic page or you have to work as a copywriter or something like that. A literature graduate has to work as a copywriter. She's taking that job so that she can give equal attention to the uh, family and her also earn something. Her husband doesn't have to do that. Maybe both are uh, literature graduates, but husband can go out and work. She cannot, she has to, because there's this underwritten, unwritten contract imposed by patriarchy that women have to, women are primary caregivers in the society. So this, what happens is it creates ran, racialized labor hierarchies. Why racialized? I will come to that. Gendered hierarchies. So women are doing the jobs which are not performed by men. This, the inferior kind of jobs are actually, uh, uh, you know, outsourced to these women. And why racialized? Because these companies which are, uh, you know, this is another impact of globalization. Here, you can add this point as another impact of globalization. Leave alone the four portion. Only this point you can add as an impact of globalization. That the global north that we talk about, the developed countries, they we know that they sublet or they kind of uh, outsource. That's why we have these BPOs uh, in, in, in these third world countries. They outsource their lesser important tasks. And now they're outsourcing it. This is about, this study was about Amazon uh, platform, work, uh, micro work platform. So they are outsourcing the lesser important works to these women of South, South poor, poorer countries like Africa and countries of Asia. So it is creating not only gendered labor hierarchies, it is also creating racialized labor hierarchies. So these well-educated women, they are actually falling prey to gendered and racialized labor hierarchies. Is it clear? Guys, did you understand this point? Uh, because this point is important. Okay, great. Great. Also, these women are unaware that rewards that you're coming, the monetary reward that you're getting with an element of unfairness. So there is robo-firing. Robo-firing means that you are almost like a robot. Your employer doesn't know you. You're like an AI that, that is working. And uh, 
just like you stop a robot so there is no hire and fire fixed policy or something they just don't like your work and there is no explanation that is given to you so this is another uh, you know in your labor laws or any any question related to labor you can say that how informalization actually leads to you can use this term robo firing which is widely happening in these in these fields that there is robo firing like a robot you just stop it from functioning there is no humanitarian consideration no ethical ground robo firing you can note this down uh these cut obligations like labor regulations social protection pursuing regulatory entrepreneurship they don't have these ethical grounds so this is by a again you can quote this name polman and barry according to their study they says they say that they don't have labor regulation social protection and uh, and they don't have a regulatory entrepreneurship as an entrepreneur they you don't regulate uh, whatever is happening in your uh, you know in, in in your entrepreneurial venture so jeff bezos doesn't control what is happening in this amazon platform or, or what is happening to a uh, to a micro worker who is working with amazon probably he doesn't even know the name or he 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 is not even aware of what is happening and just like a woman and highly educated women graduation masters whatever are an engineer she's taken and she's fired just like that from tomorrow her work is not considered so this is also uh they are at the impulse of global digital capital this possesses educated women at class caste racial locations of their labor and creates a reserve army of women who compete willingly to be part of an international gender embedded labor hierarchy so this is marx's concept of reserve army so this actually instead of contributing to the labor force these women don't actually contribute to the labor force these women they are still a part of the reserve army that uh, marx talks about it's only that they are their problem is at a higher scale because they are not only a reserve army marx talks of women who are homemakers who are reserve army because they are part of the unpaid labor now they are part of gendered and racialized labor hierarchies and yet they are a uh, reserve army of labor because they don't join the main labor force so this is the reason what happens is uh, this this is also a kind of you can also use this kind of examples in your paper one when you have these development these core periphery theory of you know the sorokin's model and all these things you have so that the here you can use that this form of exploitation in you can use in modern society in the modern society perspective if they are used if you have told that they have followed the core periphery theory now that was in a different in a mercantile world where these colonies would be set up i i i i am aware i hope that you have gone through your paper one not all but some have gone through so you know about these uh, core periphery theory of mercantilism and how these countries formed colonies in south america in africa and in the east to exploit things and uh, you know make uh, have markets in their um, countries yeah so this is a new form of in a globalized world you have this form of exploitation you have this form of exploitation where there is robo firing there is lack of regulatory entrepreneurship and uh, and uh, lack of uh, you know they they don't proper follow uh, entrepreneurial policies they don't have ethical considerations and also there is reserve uh, women who are denied their um, women who join they are still the uh, reserve army of labor but they also can join at the lower rung of labor hierarchies and there is extremely extreme racialization that is why countries of the north or the developed countries they sublet or they outsource their work to these uh, developing countries and their worst affected are these women so it's double your party on women so is it clear where can we get sociological case studies there is no fixed source my dear aditya there's no fixed source we'll cover as much for example say you don't have to go and read every sociological case study in this in this current affairs session in these current affairs sessions that we are having we will uh, we will more or less cover important studies important topics which you can use in your answers 
and with the uh, at the end you can start with a you can end with a conclusion that in germany the federal labor court ruled that crowd workers can also be employees and uk supreme court also said that they are uber drivers are workers and they also have labor rights similarly social security code that was passed in india also entails platform workers and other uh, legislative uh, within the legislative parameters so with such kind of progressive legislation that is taking place around the world uh, you can end it on a positive note don't end anything on a negative note so with that we come to the end of today's session uh, it was supposed to be a one hour session but it, we have already uh, crossed uh, the time and uh, i hope it's clear to everybody any doubts you can ask now so did you get any kind of uh, positive so so uh did you learn how to uh, you know integrate your current affairs how to use it okay 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 was it beneficial guys did it add to value to your preparations you got some kind of things to made easy because you have these problems with how to integrate examples one so okay so we'll be continuing this session okay great any questions i guess no more questions i guess no questions any questions anybody okay okay thank you thank you we'll meet again next saturday great thanks thanks okay then bye guys